Welcome back to Palette Expanders. We're in episode number seven, and I, uh, well, we have brought some friends to help us in this tasting. Let's get started. All right, so we have, um, or we're here for the Mead Stampede competition. Woo! Lisi and I um, started this competition, and this is our panel of amazing people who have helped literally make it happen. So, uh, and rather than go down the line, I'm just gonna pop their name card right on top of their face <laughs> so you know exactly who they are. Shout out to all of these wonderful people. Now, um, we're here to do the same thing we've always done, which is taste test things and just have a good time. So we have two meads, and of course I'll be showing the recipes for each. The people who have brought these meads are not BC and myself, but rather Jake right here and Nick. And of course they're not gonna spoil what they've brought until the end when we get to that point. Unless well, the mead we brought is spoiled. <laughs> and then we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So uh, on the screen right now, you can see the recipes for these two meads and um, you will get to see a little close up of what each one looks like. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, let's start with, how about Jake's? Which I believe was my right. That seems like preferential treatment. Oh, clear one? Oh, <laughs> the, the, more, the more red. Are you There's rewarding one. clarity? I'm not rewarding it's clarity. Deeper, yeah, <laughs> the clearer one, so. <laughs> There's a deep berry smell to this one. Definitely <laughs> berry. I'm thinking just immediately I get cranberry uh -huh. is what I'm thinking. Maybe a raspberry. I don't know, I'm getting a, like, a bit of sweetness. It's hard to get cranberry. I mean, maybe, but there's a lot of sweetness in that too. Yeah. Which I don't associate with cranberry. Yeah, there's a certain smell I'm getting that it, I associate with cranberry. But also, like, if you ever have, like, um, uh, a raspberry that's been sitting in there too, in the little container too long and it's really mushy mm. and you eat that that's sort of what I'm getting is that that overly ripe or tart raspberry interesting I, hmm. mm. I, I don't feel like the the nose on this is very strong I, I really have to and it might be my my allergies <laughs> peaking right now but I don't I'm not there's like a little bit of like a juicy berry thing in there. My brain is convinced that I, I'm picking up something smooth, like a like a lactose or vanilla kind of. Right, something. and that's I think where I'm getting that sweetness. Mm -hmm. you know, but I, I then it is very difficult for me to get smell particles from this in my nose. Smell particles. <laughs> no, I agree. It, it is subtle. It is a little bit berry, but it's kind of subtle, yeah. and there is definitely something in that vanilla lactose mm -hmm. suggesting sweetness. I don't think, I'm not getting like any honey <laughs> at all. Jake struggling. <laughs> I will give you one hint. The one hint but is this is, this is not a mead. Oh. oh. This is not a mead. If you're looking for honey, you're not gonna find it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what a curveball. <laughs> that's the, that's the hint you get. one hint you get. That's a big hint. I don't know, it almost this tastes like meat channel. It almost, <laughs> it almost tastes like blueberry to me with like added a little added bitterness or sour. Hmm. That's kind of what I'm picking up. Why don't we flip now? Let's get to the other side. Let's check on the aroma for Nick's. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. it's got a lot of nose. Yeah, it's got a a very characteristic like country fruit wine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cidery to it. This reminds me, and this is not necessarily a negative, but this reminds me of some of my very early country fruit wines that were made with uh, those like cans of like old orchard juice mm. concentrate mm. and table sugar. Mm -hmm. Had a very similar cidery, punchy, dry nose mm -hmm. to this. Getting like a tea quality, not like straight hibiscus, but there's something like it's just taking over. God, this is so tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, I want to say. I want to comment on what you guys are saying. But, yeah, uh, it is hard to yourself. Yeah, when we do these, I we like, of course, have to make some sort of comment. So it's always like a like saying something that's around the idea, but never like exactly. <laughs> yeah, I would say like if if you're getting like a tea quality, maybe that's in the right direction. Mm. Like, 
there's some sort of spiced tea nature to it. Mm. This has like a little bit of a like a black cherry aroma to me. Not like a not a like maraschino like uh whatever they're sweet cherry something else. That's how I was trying to pick it out. It's it's a more distinct fruit flavor or fruit aroma on this than on Jake's. But yeah, it's a, a, a dark cherry or blueberry-ish. Mm-hmm. Right. I was thinking blueberry at first, but I, I was starting to lean towards cherry. I, but it's hard to pick out, but it is more distinct than it was on the first one. All right, so yeah. let's do this. Let's go ahead and switch it back over. Let's taste test Jake's and uh, see if we can suss out what's happening here. This feels like, like I um, woke up Saturday morning and I like, had some pancakes and eggs and stuff and I needed some good juice. <laughs> Very juicy. Yeah, after tasting, I'm, I'm going all in on cranberry. That, that's, I think I'm gonna stick with cranberry. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie, it does have a real cran apple kind of flavor. <laughs> it does. There's not a lot of alcohol in there, so it just kind of makes me think of those like uh, ocean spray. Ocean spray. Yeah, <laughs> cran apple. But still got that vanilla something. Yeah, if if you like take a take a swig and kind of exhale cool air across your tongue, you'll a little bit pick up that. Yeah, there's something soft in there. Mm-hmm. It has like there's definitely some tannic quality to it because mm-hmm. you know I can feel it in my mouth the, around the gums and stuff. But the it doesn't linger on the tongue or in the throat very long. It's sort of um, yeah. Now, I guess watery to some extent. Um, it doesn't. It's not very viscous mm-hmm. um, or oily. I might have to agree with the cranberry. It's probably more than just that, but <laughs> I'm thinking that there's something. It is. There's it is. something cran in there. <laughs> something. Cran. Yeah. yeah. Can, I, can I say something about the nose that is an off note? Maybe not pleasant. Yeah. I, I <laughs> You're not gonna hurt my feelings. Um, <laughs> say it, buddy. Uh, I, I when I smell it, I kind of smell like baby wipes. <laughs> like, if you what? open up a oh. container of baby yeah, wipes. you just ruined it for me. No, I... <laughs> You're not wrong. Oh, I wasn't going to say it, but my, really? my very first thing, it, yeah. there was something baby something. That was literally the very yeah. first thing yeah. I got. Wow. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't know yeah. how to describe it, but it was something that reminded me of, like, baby product. Seriously, like a, like, like, <laughs> like a baby powder, baby wipe, something in there. Baby powder? Jeez. It, where did I go wrong? <laughs> I, I, I don't, okay. I don't okay. know what it is, but something reminded me that was the very first impression I got. We get a flashback to Jake <laughs> cleaning his car like <laughs> baby wipes. <laughs> <laughs> he uses talcum powder to get those yeah. social bugs in. <laughs> get a nice fit. I don't get that at all. I, I Maybe, again, it's my allergies. I don't pick up like a baby wipe off, off aroma. <laughs> it does have a, refresh, a refreshing taste to it, though, but it's... It doesn't seem very alcoholic at all. Like I would be incredibly surprised if there is above what ten percent maybe alcohol or even I would say like, like six. Oh yeah, or yeah. Like that. I was yeah, gonna guess five to six. There's yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> in this very really thin yeah. cidery range. Mm-hmm. Like I think it could uh, benefit from the carbonation potentially. Mm. Yeah, if this was mm. carbonated. It would yeah. add to like. The, the mouth feel, you know, the feel like a carbonic acid. Mimosa style. Like. All right, well, let's do this. Let's switch over now. Okay. Over to Nyx. Ooh, that's a powerful flavor. It's definitely got a bigger body. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. Coming off the tube. Mm-hmm. This is bigger body. And there's a little alcohol on that. Yeah, you got a little yeah. boozy. It sticks around a while longer, though. Yeah. I will say that, like, the bright notes I was getting from the fruit are not as bright to me. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a little nose, muddier it's than the nose. Yeah. 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 But I do like the sweetness on it, though. Not a lot of acidity. It's very smooth. Mm-hmm. It's very smooth going down. My brain says these might be really good together. <laughs> <laughs> Mix them all together. Yes. Yeah, yeah they're, they're both really good. They're both kind of in the same realm, but very different at the same time. Yeah. I, are y'all picking up the warm spice thing that's out mm-hmm. there? Like, yeah. There's some cardamom in there. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking chai. Yeah. But like, it's like cinnamony. There's like yeah. a yeah. Yeah. 
it's got a feeling too to me there's like the the burn you get from alcohol and then there's like there's the burn you get from spice but, spice burn mm-hmm. yeah a little bit of both tingle, yeah maybe <laughs> yeah but that spice kind of just ling- lingers on your tongue for a minute spice tingles alcohol burns is that how that goes <laughs> <laughs> there's definitely an array of spices though it's not just one thing Mm. Not like a spice. Is this Ceylon eggs. cinnamon or cashew? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, How fancy did you go? <laughs> that really makes a difference. Any other guesses on what's in front of us? I still think it's black cherry. Like, I just, there's not enough like, acidity there to support that for me. But the sweetness could combat. I mean, it's got a fair amount of sweetness. Maybe. I, I've been wrong lots of times on this show. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely leaning more into that cherry than the blueberry that I thought at first. Right? Yeah. I, I kind of, I was drifting there after tasting it. It's it's very much more cherry. I'm not 100 percent sure it's cherry, but closer to that. I have guesses. All right, I mean, it doesn't taste like cough syrup, so if it is cherry. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. See, I think it does taste like cough syrup, but I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> no, that's fine. I pick it's up like, a sweet cherry in there, and that combined with the booziness that you get on the exhale, to me, tastes like robitussin. Hmm. So I, I, um, I think it's uh, interesting you think it tastes like cough syrup, but no one else said that, because once I tell you what... <laughs> so it's, it's a cough it. syrup. Oh, it's a cough syrup. syrup. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Robitussin-mel. <laughs> 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 no, I... If I are we guessing? Are we at the guessing part? Yeah, yeah, sure. I would guess that this is uh, Mel Mel made with sweet cherries and like a chai mixed tea. Yeah. Uh, Jake's. I think Jake yeeted some Easy One 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 Eight into a bottle of Ocean Spray Cran Apple, <laughs> and that's that. I, I honestly, there's nothing distinct about this yeah. that I can pull out other than it does. I agree with basically everyone. It tastes like cranberry. Except it's got that little extra, like it's a soft, vanilla, vanilla softness. It's cranberry and vanilla. And yeah. maybe that's like a tea that was used for tannin or something. Yeah. But I, there's nothing distinct enough that I can say XYZ. I'd pretty much agree. But I would say I don't get super, when I think like bright cherry, like you're thinking sweet cherry, I don't get that same vibe. I get like dark cherry from this. And uh, I don't know what spice, really. I, I'm struggling to pick that out. But it does have a little bit of a spice to it, so. And then this does feel like a cran apple. I mean, I, I did that test. I made, and it has the same, like, juiciness that you get from, like, the glucose, whatever, sugar combination, and a cran apple, or, like, an apple juice. Like, it has that body. It has the sweetness. Um, and it has perceived sweetness, too. But I'm sure you did back sweet just to that here on this. So, I would say that this is cran something. Do we reveal or did anybody well, else want to talk about it? I don't have much different to say other than like, I don't know that the spices were achieved with a tea, like a chai. I mean, that'd be a really strong chai, which is mm-hmm. possible. But I almost think it's like a, a mix of like Indian spices, like mm-hmm. cardamom and maybe mm-hmm. some cinnamon and some, maybe There's even, some. maybe nutmeg, like a tiny bit. But that, I mean, then you're kind of splitting hairs because everything kind of, I agree. There's definitely like a cinnamony yeah. character in there. Yeah, but it's not just cinnamon. At least that's not what's coming through. Anything else? Rob? Um, see, I mean, cinnamon was the biggest thing that came out to me. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a bit more to it. I agree with David though. It's not quite chai, um, but there's a, there's a blend of spices. I don't know yeah. some all spice. I who knows. Um, <clears throat> the only thing really different that I'm picking up is a little bit of appliness. There's Something that makes me think hmm. apples are involved here somehow, and it's like a, a little bit of a appley nutmeg cinnamon, not like an apple pie, but like some of that essence is here, is mm-hmm. presenting itself. Now, uh, for Jake's mead, or I guess not mead, <laughs> you know, so I actually experimented with uh, yeeting some EC one 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 into a bottle of uh, not uh, cran apple. Uh, but uh, cran mango. Okay. Uh, and yeah. It when it finished, it came out very similar. That it was sort of very watery. It didn't have much body to it. Mm-hmm. Then again, I didn't balance it out with any tannins or acid or anything like that. I just put the yeast in, let it go, and tried the end product. 
it had that same sort of not exactly baby wipes or whatever, <laughs> but it has it had an off note to it. And I don't know if that's just the nature of the yeast with the liquid that it was put into, or um, it needs time to age out. Like, uh, are you? How old is your? Uh, we'll have to wait for a second. We'll have to. Oh, is, is that okay? That's the part that's in part of the reveal. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, if it's young, then maybe. Uh, I mean, I've had mine for a bit now, and that flavor, that off note, still kind of lingering, so it hasn't aged out entirely. I wonder so, what fusel leads to baby wipes. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I would I would go along with EC and say that it's like yeah EC one one eight in a bottle of uh, some sort of uh, ocean springs or whatever ocean spray uh, cranberry <laughs> something. That's so, all right, Jake. Admit so yourself. Offended. What what yeah, have you brought was... us? Let's let's start with you. Okay, this <laughs> is a Marionberry Jam wine made exclusively with Marionberry Jam. That got it up to this is a ten and a half percent. Wow, <laughs> what? That's more. It's ten and a half percent, and it is. I split it into two batches in the primary. So one was made with Red Star Rouge, and the other was made with BM Four by Four. And I let them finish out. I blended them back together, and I added about ten ounces of lavender tea. That's the baby wipes you're picking up on. Oh, lavender, no. oh lavender no. tea. That's what it is. Yeah. It's, well, now I just feel bad. C one one eight. It's the ocean. Okay. It's. And then lavender tea, and about four tablespoons of lactose, oh. um, and a couple t- tablespoons of vanilla. So okay, you, okay. You, everything everything vanilla. you mentioned yeah, someone so. said lactose and someone said vanilla, uh-huh. so you guys picked up on. Yeah. It. Okay. Yeah. 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 I pick it up on the nose. There's really no cranberry it. at all. You're all wrong. <laughs> yeah. uh, Marionberry is, is that a blackberry? Marionberry is a blackberry hybrid. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. That okay. makes sense. I yeah. Mean, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Well. I will say, I don't know, I haven't experimented a lot with lactose, but I know that obviously you can use it to build body and uh, it adds flavor, but I, I haven't had enough to say like, oh, that's what lactose tastes like in a group. So I probably need to experiment with that. It does sort of have like, maybe now that I just have the information, I think this, but it has uh, somewhat creaminess to it. Uh, but maybe that's like the vanilla that's back there. But again, it is still sort of watery, so it's not like yeah. this intense, like overwhelming creaminess that coats your tongue. But there's like this lingering uh, creaminess that's there. And that's what threw me off a little bit because usually I can pick lactose out of a brew, right? I especially mm-hmm. if it's heavy handed. So the lactose was subtle, but the vanilla also like tempered it a little bit, right? So it was hard to tell. It's definitely lactose. I thought so, but. It kind of blends with the vanilla. It's it was really hard to pick out for sure. Mm-hmm. And so. it's interesting to me that it's more prevalent on the nose than in the actual flavor profile. Mm-hmm. Like is we we mentioned vanilla and lactose while we were sniffing it, not while we were drinking it. Right. Yeah. And and drinking it, I don't really pick up on that at all. But I've used vanilla as a smoothing agent, just a touch to smooth things out. Where you know, my, my goal wasn't to add vanilla flavor. My goal was to add vanillins that softened a really tart brew. Mm-hmm. And it sounds a little bit like maybe that was your goal. Then. That's exactly what happened. It came out of primary, very tart, um, acidic. It almost burned. And then after adding the lavender and the vanilla and the lactose, it was very smooth. Like you said, mm-hmm. uh, watery, smooth, creamy. I think I get all those things. And I think they all did their job. Sorry, it's it's it. perfectly good. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't. Did you? I don't ferment, hate it at all. Did you ferment on the? Um, it was it lavender? You said? No no no. I just made a little bit of tea, um, in secondary and put it in. Mm-hmm. All right, Nick. Um, what what's yours? <laughs> what are we gonna? Uh, it is a cherry <laughs> sarsaparilla meat. Oh, sass- okay. Yeah. It, it was made with mesquite honey from. Uh, yep. Uh, Crockett Honey Company in uh, Tempe, Arizona. Shout out. Shout out to you. Uh, and Send yeah, it, it's around 12% ABV. I... And it's, uh, I would say, almost a year old uh, of aging. So How did you for add your sarsaparilla? So uh, I fermented a batch of traditional mesquite blossom meat. Uh-huh. And then once it it before it finished, it was at like 1.023, I think. Mm-hmm. So it was still pretty sweet. It, it did not finish fermenting at all. 
I racked into a bunch of separate, smaller, one or two gallon containers, I can't remember now. And I added dark cherries, so it was dark cherries, okay. um, to it so that it would ferment those dark cherries and not necessarily have an overwhelming cherry flavor, mm -hmm. but it would have like maybe the cherry aroma or the fermented cherry aroma mm -hmm. in there. And then once the cherries fermented out and it was mostly dry, I stabilized and added the sarsaparilla. And I think I did eight ounces of sarsaparilla for a week and a half, two weeks. I kind of tried it till I liked it. And then I back sweetened a little bit. And so it was Wait, back eight ounces of sarsaparilla? That might be wrong. I have to double check the recipe. Was on the screen. Well, right? I only say so, that because we did a video <laughs> recently where I used half an ounce okay. in a one gallon and it was like getting kicked in the teeth. Yeah, so a, it might have been a like a root beer. an eighth of an ounce, but yeah, I, I can't, it, maybe it wasn't eight. Eight so ounces sounds too right? much to no, me that's now that's 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 I think about it. I think the packet I bought might have been two ounces, so it was maybe an eighth of that, but um, it was definitely not a lot of It was like half of the packet that I bought, so whatever that was. Well, so the mesquite honey makes a lot of sense to me. I've used that. I really like mesquite. I need to order another pail of that. But I think uh, I I like the balance you've achieved here of flavors. It feels very smooth, and even at a year old, it's still a little hot. But I think it, it takes some time to bring that down. Yeah. I do wonder if this was oaked even slightly with some like vanilla, mm. like something American with that. Oak. Yeah. yeah. How. Uh, what kind of notes would also come out from it? Although there's already a lot of flavor out there, so. Yeah, I, I thought it could use a little more acidity mm -hmm. because it has that, the sarsaparilla gives it that tannic quality and you get the mouth feel and you get the sweetness because I back sweeten, but uh, the cherries didn't provide enough sweetness, which I think BC yeah. pointed out that there's not that tart cherry acidity that's there. So yeah. mm -hmm. I think I can maybe add some Acid, and a little tartaric acid, acid yeah, yeah, something, something in there to bring that up to give it some uh, crispiness because it is pretty um, rich, right? It's the mesquite honey, sarsaparilla. I, when I first smelt it, I actually thought it smelled a little bit like Dr Pepper. So Dr Pepper, you know, has like a lot of people think it's like a cherry soda. So it has that cherry sarsaparilla sort of. I, uh -huh. For a bit, I was calling it the Dr Pepper meme. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think those are both great. Jake, I'm sorry that we misidentified yours. <laughs> no, don't be That's quite all right. I, I think that's the whole point of the show, though, is to, to taste things. And it's not necessarily, it doesn't mean you haven't done your job. It does mean that we, this is just our palates as, as we are. And, you know, um, I think even the most refined palate still might struggle. But for people who watch this, our hope, I think, is that you are gaining some new, maybe, terminology. Uh, and then also, hopefully, gaining some. Uh, desire to do this with your friends. I think this is honestly this is a lot of fun. I love getting to do the yeah, show with BC. It's a good time. But uh, being able to do it with more people is more fun. So, and thank you, gentlemen, for letting us. Uh, I don't want to say roast your meats, but <laughs> <laughs> well, to use your meats for this. This has been a lot of fun. Um, thank you, all these wonderful people again. I'll put the name card right above their face again. Um, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you are not a part of Meat Stampede or we're not part of it this year, we will hopefully be back next year. Yeah, for you have a chance to redeem yourself. Yeah, you can <laughs> redeem yourself. Um, Meat Stampede will hopefully be back next year to be a part of it. And um, I want to say a huge thank you to these guys who have helped out to, to make this happen. Uh, it's been a gauntlet of the past. crushing boxes. <laughs> yeah, right, literally. So without these guys, we would not be here today. So. Thank you to all these wonderful people. Thank you guys for watching. Um, go and support your local meaderies and your local apiaries and everything you can. Um, buy some mead and make some mead. With that, cheers.